this video is an introduction to the metric system and derivation of metric to metric conversions. The metric system is a measurement system with units based on powers of 10. Here's a table showing many units of the powers of 10, their value, their exponential form, and their prefix. I want to make it clear that this table is not a list of metric to metric conversions. This is simply a list of names, prefixes, and numbers. We're going to use this table to derive metric to metric conversion factors. Within the metric system, there are a number of base units. They include meter, liter, gram, joule, etc. These prefixes in the table are placed in front of the base units to come up with different units in the metric system, such as kilometer, milliliter, kilogram, centigram, centimeter, kilojoule, and of course you could simply have a meter, a liter, a gram, or a joule, which we'll call the base unit. Now I'll show you how to derive metric to metric conversion factors using a table of exponents and the prefixes. What we're going to take advantage of here are the exponentials, the 10 raised to a certain exponent, and associate that with the prefix. Now notice just about every one of the exponential values has a prefix associated with it except for 10 to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. We're going to associate 10 to the 0, or no prefix, with a base unit. So a gram has no prefix, a liter, a meter, a joule, etc. These units have no prefix. Therefore, the exponential associated with those units is zero. Now I'll show you the steps for deriving metric to metric conversion factors using a table of exponentials. Step one set up a fraction with one unit in the numerator and the other unit in the denominator. It doesn't matter which unit you place in the numerator or the denominator. Step 2. Determine the larger unit and write a number 1 in front of the larger unit and a 10, a number 10, in front of the other unit, which would be the smaller unit. Step 3. Determine the difference in other words, the subtraction between the exponentials of the larger unit and the exponential of the smaller unit. The difference is always going to be positive, and that number is the exponential of the smaller unit. The idea here is that there needs to be more smaller units to make up the one larger unit. derive the conversion factor between meters and millimeters. Step one, write a fraction with the two units, millimeter in the numerator and meter in the denominator. That's just my choice to begin. I could have written a meter in the numerator and a millimeter in the denominator. Step two, write a one in front of the larger unit so I write a 1 in front of meter and a 10 in front of the smaller unit. So a 10 goes in front of the millimeter. Step 3, determine the difference between the exponentials. Well, meter is a base unit, which is associated with 10 to the 0 or an exponential of 0. Millimeter is associated with milli or 10 to the minus 3. So the difference between 0 and negative 3 is 3. So the exponential for millimeter, the smaller unit, 
is the difference between the exponentials for the two units, which the difference is 3. I want to point out a couple things. The idea, again, is there needs to be more smaller units to make up the one larger unit. If you buy into that, then that exponential for the smaller unit, in this case millimeter, always needs to be positive because we need at least 10 small ones to make up the one larger one. So in this case, it's the 10 to the third or a thousand millimeters or a thousand small ones to make up the one large one. If you derive metric to metric conversion factors using this method that I'm showing you, the exponential for the smaller unit will always be positive because you're proposing to have one larger unit. Therefore, you need many smaller units for it to be a physical equivalent. The other thing I'll point out is that you can reciprocate or flip the conversion factor fraction as I've shown here. I began with millimeters over meters, but then I show in step three that yes, you could have a thousand millimeters over one meter, or you could have one meter over a thousand millimeters. This is possible because conversion factors are physical equivalents. Conversion factors are not necessarily numerical equivalents, they're physical equivalents which one of these conversion factors you'll use depends on the problem you're solving. Now let's derive the conversion factor between milliliter and microliter. MC is commonly used as an abbreviation for micro. Step one. I'm going to choose to write milliliter in the numerator and microliter in the denominator. Step two, a number one goes in front of milli and a ten goes in front of micro because micro is smaller. That means I need at least ten micros to make up the one larger milli. Now what that exact number is, we'll determine that in step three. In step three, we know that the exponential for milli is negative 3. The exponential for micro is negative 6. So the difference between negative 3 and negative 6 is 3. Therefore, the exponential for the smaller unit is going to be 3. So physically, what we're proposing is there are a thousand microliters, a thousand smaller ones, that make up the one larger one, which is the milliliter. And I could write the conversion factor as a fraction, either as one milliliter over a thousand microliters, or a thousand microliters over one milliliter. In this final example, I'll derive the conversion factor between kilometers and micrometers. As I mentioned earlier, MC can also be used as an abbreviation for micro. So I'll begin by placing the kilometer unit in the numerator and the micrometer unit in the denominator. I then write a 1 in front of the kilometer, the larger unit, and a 10 in front of the smaller unit, micrometer. Next, I determine the difference between kilo and micro. Kilo is associated with an exponential of positive 3. Micro is associated with an exponential of negative 6. So the difference between 3 and negative 6 is 9. Therefore, the exponential for the micro in this conversion factor is positive 9. So this means that there are a billion micrometers 
or 10 to the ninth micrometers in the one kilometer. And we could write the fraction as either one kilometer over 10 to the ninth micrometers or 10 to the ninth micrometers over one kilometer.